I welcome you all for this NPTEL lecture on earthquake resistant design of foundation. And this lecture we are going to discuss in continuation of the pile foundation, which is the third module for this course. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about a new topic, which is called CPRF, that is Combined Pile Raft Foundation. This will be the first lecture on CPRF. And the, once we are done with this, then we will discuss the second lecture on CPRF. So let me share the slides with you. How this uh, you could see here that uh, we are going to talk about combined pile raft foundation and that is general. In the case, this is the third module pile foundation, and within the third module, uh, this is the 23rd lecture on CPRF. And next lecture will be this is general, next lecture will be continuous on CPRF, where we will discuss geotechnical analysis and guidelines. So, before I go ahead. Let me acknowledge that the most of the contents of this lecture are taken from the following literature. This is a book entitled Foundation Systems for High Rise Structures, CRC Press. And there is uh, thankful to the authors of this uh, and this uh, their contribution is gratefully acknowledged that uh, this is a kind of a resource. Now, what we are going to talk in this today's lecture on CPR. We are going to talk about four points. First is production of CPR, what is a uh, uh, combined pile raft foundation, and how it is different than pile foundation and raft foundation. Then we are going to talk what are the advantages of CPR. Next, bearing and deformation behavior. And finally, we are going to talk about calculation method also. So let's first discuss introduction. When we talk about introduction, a CPRF is a special form of deep foundation and basically it is a hybrid foundation system that combines the bearing capacity of raft foundation and the pile. So basically in CPRF is a combination of raft foundation and pile foundation. Technically and economically it is an optimized solution for foundations. PRFs can be used for the foundation of classic high rise buildings as well as for engineering construction like bridges and towers. So normally, the combined pile raft foundations are used for uh, skyscrapers, which is like high-rise buildings, or it could be bridges and towers. Now there is an interaction between the foundation elements and the subsoil. Therefore, CPRF have very complex bearing and deformation behavior. Therefore, CPRF has been classified into the geotechnical category three according to Eurocode seven. For safety and quality assurance, an independent geotechnical engineer has to be involved that it can guarantee what is called the 4i principle. And in this, this principle requires a check by certified independent expert the area of geotechnical engineering, structure engineering, fire prevention, and technical facilities. So once we uh, you know the use CPR up, then it is need to be checked independent. Because CPRF comes under a uh, geotechnical category 3 according to Eurocode 7. Now, continue with this. What are the advantages of a CPRF compared to the normal foundation? First, it increases in the bearing capacity as compared to spread foundation. Uh, when you use CPRF due to the presence of raft foundation, there is a reduction of total and differential setting. Then, reduction of the bending moments of the foundation raft. And the size of CPRF will also ensure that there is a reduction in pile material 30% to 60%. These are the advantages of CPRF. The next, what is the bearing and deformation behavior under combined pile raft foundation? When we go for this, we observe that measurement data of high rise buildings and spread foundations, particularly in Frankfurt and Main. Uh, which is a germ, uh, city of the Germany, showed that the, during the load transfer into the subsoil, 60% to 80% of the settlement arise in the upper third of the influence. A CPRF transfers a part of the stress from areas with a small stiffness, roughly speaking, deeper area of the subsoil. And this transmission is affected by the piles of the CPRF without neglecting the bearing capacity of the raft pile. Raft foundation. So, here as mentioned, that 
to have a combination of raw foundation and soil foundation. So see in this figure, this figure in the second figure, what is shown, stress distribution with the depth. And you can see most of the stress is in at the depth of up to 20 meter, like you know, 60 to 80 percent load transfer will be uh, carried by this zone. This is the load transfer mechanism. Then here it is assumed that the stiffness of the soil, that is Young's modulus, is linearly varying with the depth. This is where you have some value at the surface and maximum at the this was about continue with bearing and deformation behavior. A CPRF can be considered as geotechnical uh, composite structure which consists of the following interacting bearing elements. What are the elements? You have foundation rock, you have piles that is group, uh, pile group and subsoil and that is the interaction among these. And when we talk about the interaction, bearing and deformation behavior for this CPRF is characterized by the interaction, the bearing elements and the subsoil. And uh, this figure is showing all type of interaction. What is shown in this figure? What we have in this figure? This is our piles here. The D is the capital D is the diameter of the pile. While you have a raft here on the top of the pile group, and this is raft is loaded. So load from the superstructure is transferred to the raft, and from raft to the Pile cap and ultimately on the pile. Now, when we talk about interaction between CPRF and soil, there are four types of interaction as listed here. First one is called what is called pile soil interaction, that is the interaction between pile and soil, shown as here by one. So like uh, first one is here, pile and soil interaction. The second one, pile pile interaction, which will be between, between two piles. Of course, it will be through the soil. It can be said pile soil pile interaction or pile pile interaction. Then there will be interaction between the raft and soil that is denoted here on the third, then raft interaction. And there will be interaction between pile and raft also, which is shown here at number four. These four interactions will be there, and all these interactions match CPRF class as a difficult. When we talk about the bearing and deformation behavior, there is a term F total K of the rising structures are transferred to the piles and subsoil. What is F total K? This is total load, K stands for characteristic load, particular settlement S. What you have, uh, this uh, rising is uh, transferred to the uh, subsoil and this is similar to a classic D foundation. Mobilization of CPRF depends significantly Settlement S, the integration of the soil contact pressure sigma xy, where the foundation raft is the resistance uh, R raft KF. Total this uh, resistance, so a total load coming, the total characteristic resistance is given by the equation number one. What is here? The load carried by the piles, that is resistance by the piles, and the resistance by the raft. The uh, uh, resistance by the raft is denoted R raft KF, while for a pile R pile KF, so the resistance provided by a single pile. And summation is done here for the number of piles. Now the resistance provided by total resistance provided by the, all the piles plus resistance provided by the raft. Once you have, once you combine both these two, then you get the total resistance at a part or total characteristic resistance at a particular value of settlement S. Now continue with this, uh, this is the already discussed, continue with bearing and deformation behavior. When we talk about pile resistance, for a ITH pile, the resistance of single foundation pile of I can be determined and this resistance of single pile as usual, when we talk about resistance of pile, you know it comes from two factors. One is its base uh, this resistance and another is this fit. You have a uh, base resistance something called from end bearing. The first term is here in pile, this is pile resistance, a single pile ITH pile at a particular settlement S, RBKI, it is related to base. And this can be found 
it is uh, what is called what we call the skin friction uh, uh, this at a particular you know that at the base but, uh, uh, you have this stress at the base multiply by the base area pi d square by 4 where d is the diameter of the pi then for skin friction is given here which is varying with the z this is constant at the depth and you know that the skin friction will be defined at different depth at particular depth and it should be integrated for the height of the structure yeah, that means pi dz and q and k should be multiplied by 2 pi r pi r or pi d which is peripheral multiple so it should be integrated over the height of the pi so this is coming addition to the resistance friction the first term is giving you the contribution uh, this resistance the total resistance provided by the pi will be combination of these two. Continue with this, but we have bearing and deformation behavior. There is a one term called uh, alpha CPRF. This is called CPRF coefficient. This is called CPRF coefficient. This is a ratio only. One thing is that this coefficient is a ratio unit for this. This is defined summation of resistance of all the piles or the resistance, total resistance provided of all the piles divided by the total resistance which is the rock out. Okay. And naturally the value of alpha CPR will lie between 0 and 1. Suppose uh, the piles are not carrying any load, okay, or whole load is carried by the rock and it, this value, this coefficient will be 0. If piles are carrying the whole load, the 100% load, then the value of this coefficient will be 1. The value of this coefficient is 0 and 1 and the, this coefficient is denoting what is the share of the piles that is the definition of this. So a CPR of coefficient means the whole load is carried by the foundation pile. Now normally the value of this coefficient is suggested to be 0 0.3 and 0 0.9 or 0.3 and 0.9. However, for optimum value of this coefficient is further recommended in a narrow range 0.5 and 0 0.6. That means between 5 to 0 0.7. Yeah. But normally this coefficient should not be less than 0 0.3 and not more than 0 0.3. This was about bearing and deformation behavior. Continue with that. What do we have? The low deformation behavior of CPRF depends on the stress state of the subfloor. What is the state of the subfloor? Value of the mobilized skin friction of the piles is influenced by the effective horizontal stresses. The stress level of the subsoil around a pile of CPRF is influenced by the neighboring piles, the foundation rock, and the effect during the construction of the pile itself. So, this stress level around the uh, pile is influenced by many factors, the neighboring piles, the rock foundation, and if any construction effects are there. If the soil contact pressure under the foundation rock, the stress level of the subsoil increases, which leads to considerably higher skin friction that can be mobilized in the upper part of the pile. And th that is depending on the setup. Conversely, the piles reduce the soil contact pressure under the foundation. Naturally, piles will help to reduce. Continue with this. The load deformation behavior of CPRF is influenced what is called by the pile raft interaction as well as the pile pile interaction. The same geometric dimensions of a raft, CPRF coefficient alpha CPRF depends on the arrangement of the pile. When we say arrangement of the pile, that means how many piles you are using, what is the spacing between the piles, and the arrangement is described normally by the ratio E by D. What is the spacing ratio? That E is the pile spacing and D is the diameter. And the ratio L by D is called aspect ratio, that is ratio of pile length to the pile diameter, as well as by the load and settlement space. What we can see that the arrangement of the piles will be described by the ratio E by D and L by D. When we talk about the E by D, you can see in this figure here, what is E here? E is shown in this figure, center to center spacing. And D is capital D is the diameter of the pile. Yeah. Normally understand that instead of E for spacing S is used. 
but here s is reserved for settlement avoid the confusion of the notation he has been used the space rather than s when we you have this this now when we talk about the uh, the e by d ratio so the configuration many things will depend on the ratio e by d the ratio e by d is low or if the construction has a high number of piles and and proportional load distribution between the piles and the foundation raft remains even if the total load is multiplied load component which is carried by the piles can increase slightly because slightly load less if the ratio e by d is high uh, so that means if e by d is low then the contribution coming from the piles and raft remains nearly constant that means uh, even if you are changing the load level it will not much change contribution will remain uh, as it is however if the ratio e by d is high that is the load component carried by the raft foundation as well as uh, the settlement is rising in connection with a higher load level as a result load component carried by the piles decreases when the e by d is high more load will be carried spacing is large between the piles naturally more loads will be carried by the raft rather than piles continue with this if the pile spacing e between the piles of a ctrf decreases and if you get this ratio e by d near greater than 3 or equal to 3 so it is coming near 3 the load behave, uh, bearing behavior of a pile of is just depends on the position within the foundation system if e by d is greater than 3 that case load carried by the piles depends on the location of the pile. this is uh, analogous to classical pile foundation if at the same settlement the pile resistance of the ctrf increases and to the a's of the raft that means the uh, piles which are spread near the a's will uh, resist more load or will carry with the more load while piles which are situated at the center they will carry the less load and this happens with the normal pile foundation this is the same case for with the crf also and then due to the neighboring piles the inner piles receive significantly smaller load as piles especially the coronal piles receive the majority of the load. this is the case when e by d is greater than or equal to now let's consider a case when spacing between piles is increased and this ratio e by d becomes more than 6 or equal to 6 in that case the influence of the neighboring piles get smaller or that uh, all the piles will act being like uh, you know that independent piles or single piles in that case the uh, this, uh, the load carried by the ctrf have the same deformation behavior dependent of their position there is no group effect if e by d is greater than 6 and at the same time uh, the piles will behave perfectly in that case there will not be influence of the uh, location of the that uh, at this uh, where is your pile is there there is a the center where there is at the all this practice practice continue with this now what are the calculation method for that uh, ctrf so when we talk about uh, how you can evaluate uh, when you go for the design of ctrf the results of diff there are different methods and the results of these different methods depend on the modeling scheme how you have modeled and the simplified assumptions and boundary conditions for a preliminary design or in very simple cases these methods are sufficient to develop a technically and economically nice ctrf only when empirical methods provide calculation results that are comparable to reality now what are the different methods for ctrf for computation First category falls under the category empirical method. As you know, the empirical methods are based on empirical relation. Normally, this kind of uh, uh, relations are based on the results from laboratory or field test. Based on the results of laboratory and field test, bearing capacity of a single pile can be determined by correlation and the use of tabular values. Using further correlation, the bearing capacity of pile group is determined. Correlation and empirical equations are based on experiences made at instruments. model this was about empirical method and the second category is here 
the methods with equivalent alternative models. In this case, PRF is seen as an alternative model such as deep square foundation or a thick single pipe. Accordingly, whatever the assumptions, whether you assume it is a foundation, single pipe, currently you can get the solution. Now, the third and fourth method, which are you know more uh, popular, third is analytical method. Uh, and in this case, the first the bearing capital of the foundation raft is determined by clipping the pipe. So, in this method, first you will find the bearing capital of the raft foundation. If the loads are higher than the bearing capacity of the raft, surplus loads are allocated to the pile. Piles are regarded as single piles, the distance can be fully exhibited. Settlements are determined for the foundation raft and its respective load. This regard of all interaction is supplied as a when you do with analytical method, it doesn't consider the uh, the interaction effects we have discussed earlier. There are four types of interaction. Uh, the Pile soil interaction, pile pile interaction, now raft soil interaction, and raft pile interaction. There are the, uh, so if you neglect this method, analytical method, this is the limitation. Then we have the numerical methods. If we talk about numerical methods, normally these numerical methods are dealt using what is called the finite element. Finite element method, FEM. It's generally used for numerical method. Being able to consider in full complicated geometry and only the constant three dimensional simulation. Station elements are modeled with linear elastic material, while the subsoil is more modeled with elastoplastic material. Naturally, in these uh, numerical models, what we do uh, this uh, uh, this uh, structural part can be measured uh, modeled using linear elastic material or foundation can be also measured uh, modeled using linear elastic material. While the subsoil which is undergo no linear effect is well with elastoplastic material because of our calculation. That I thank you all.